Hey, what's up everybody? Thanks for clicking on the video. This is David Pendleton, and now we're going to be covering the pro division of the City Park Nine Hole Cup. So, I'm coming to you a little bit frustrated today because I didn't play my best. I left too many shots out there. I could have competed for first place, so I'm really sitting here hoping that you can learn from my shots, learn from my mistakes, and hopefully power yourself to the top of your bracket. So, let's take a look at what I did here. Uh, minus 12. This is terrible. You know, Really bad start through the first three holes, not picking up that eagle on three. You know, needed that one. And then hole nine, my goodness. Seriously, pick up a birdie. I mean, that's a hole that is a really good chance for an albatross. So, you know, if I would have just birdied three and nine, I could have been contending for first place. But, um, you know, I'm not. Uh, I'm going to get buried down here in the standings now. Even if I would have just birdied hole number nine, you know, I could be looking at top 10 finish, but it is what it is. Um, we're going to go into these replays and let's take a look at hole number one. Hole number one, we're playing here 15% at mid. This shot is really close. So four, a little bit more than four and a half back, two bars, a side spin to the right. Then I find my landing spot. So kind of notice here, my landing spot is going to be with the white ring sort of where the fringe line starts and almost over here by the rough line, okay, to the left of the sand. Look at the offset. I'm aiming short and right of the pin. Uh, the ball guide line is almost in the corner pocket of that uh, green square there. It's almost aiming at the right-hand corner. This is 15% at mid. A perfect ball. So very, very close there on hole number one. What should we do differently? We need to move that target over a little bit more to the right to get us a little bit more center to the cup. So I do think there is a good chance here to drop this one. I know there's a rough bump, um, especially in this type of wind. You know, I just didn't spin the um, tokens or the balls to, to try to dial that one in because I do think this one is gonna be a consistent shot there. Hole number two, uh, hole number two, you know, at least we're getting favorable wind on the drive. Um, so we're going to go here with the Kingmaker and we're going to go with the Kingmaker because we should be getting, um, a little bit of headwind on shot number two. So we're going to go a full right spin. And as you can see here, four and a half top. So four and a half top full, right? I've got my yellow ring touching the fringe line there. So right there is my setup point. You can see my ball guide line is aiming pretty significantly on the right hand side of the fairway. We're going to correct that ball guide line with curl. Half a ball of curl to the left, perfect ball, and you'll see this thing stops really nicely, 352 yards. You could probably add a little bit more top spin on this shot. Just make sure you don't go with the overpower because you don't want to accidentally power that ball into the rougher sand. Um, here, like I said, we're going to get a sliver of tailwind, but the nice part is we picked up the right amount of yards on the drive. That's going to keep us in sniper range and a good position here to try to drop a tough eagle. All right, so we're going to be adding some left spin and then some top spin. And really, I'm just trying to get the ball guideline like this. So you notice the game starts you up here higher. If you bring your sniper down a little bit after your spin is adjusted, you're going to get a nice consistent ball guideline. So you see how it flattens out there on the green and then it rolls through the pin. You know, that's what we're really looking for. We still have room to adjust our rings, even with that sliver of headwind, and that's because we move our target back a little bit and use top spin. We get a perfect ball. We get a nice kick here. And, you know, the speed is a little heavy, so we could reduce the top spin by just a little bit. But ultimately, that shot's even pretty close as well. So, you know, maybe you'll get hole one. If you don't, maybe you'll drop hole two and you'll get off to a nice start in the tournament. All right, hole number three. This one's a little aggravating as well because we're gonna be super, super close. So I could have had a much bigger round. That minus 12 um, could, could have been big, you know, outside of my mistake on hole seven and hole nine, which you'll see here later. So here, you know, this is the easy drive. Just pay attention to the top spin that I used. A uh, great ball. I unfortunately I clip the rough here and roll out, uh, but that's okay. 
we land on the fairway and then we're good to go for shot number two. I can get rid of that. I'll never use that replay again. Shot number two, I'm just playing with my sniper here because I know I'm going to go for the grizzly rough bump. And what we want to do on the grizzly rough bump is we like to lay up in front of the sand trap. So this is pretty simple. This is full top, full left. I'm pulling at 10% at max. You see here, no overpower, perfect ball. And we have plenty of fairway to work with there. We could even push that one a little bit harder if we wanted to, but we don't have to because we're going to play shot number three, like I said, with the Grizzly. Minus 20%, I'm playing it at mid. And then here we got to find the funnel. Took me a minute, so I'll fast forward. So I have to play it higher up here. You'll see here yellow ring by the rough. And we'll notice the spin adjustment is good. Max right with 3.1 top. Max right, 3.1 top, minus 20%. Find the funnel. Take a look here how the ball guideline is coming down the green and then it's aiming mid cup, so right at the center of the cup. Again, this is minus 20%. I played it at mid. Perfect ball. And it's like, oh my gosh, come on, man. So we need to just move our target down a little bit and get the ball guideline pointing more at the bottom of the cup. And that should help us out there on this hole as well. So the first three holes are super close. That's going to bring us into hole number four. Hole number four is very close as well. 10% at maximum distance of our club. In the headwind here, I'm just going to play the bounce over shot. I'm not going to go for the rough bump, although it is there. But, you know, I don't like it in headwind. So you're going to notice here just a little bit of backspin, okay? A little bit of backspin, ball guide line going through the hole, favoring the left-hand side of the cup. And you'll kind of see how this ball reacts. Perfect shot. This thing falls down towards the pin. Um, but, you know, like I said, it's, it's pretty close. Just a little bit of tweaking there, um, possibly adding a little bit more elevation or moving our target even more offset on the left-hand side of the cup uh, may help us out there on hole number four. Hole number five, we pick up a drop. So it depends if you want to play with the slider or not. Uh, this hole, shot number two, you know, really starting in pro division, is typically pretty slider dependent. So, you know, I don't ever really post slider numbers. Uh, what I normally do is just show you really how to trick the game on elevation instead of using a slider. I think slider becomes way more vital, you know, on expert and master. But I'll kind of give you a second into my brain on how I do this. So here we're going to go with backing our extra mile up a little bit. We're going to play this at mid distance of our extra mile. And what we want to do is aim underneath those tree branches so you see here, I go with two left and almost four top. That's probably like 3.8, 3.9 top. Perfect ball. And this thing goes exactly where we want. This is really exactly where we want to be on the fairway because when we do this, it gives us an opportunity to be straight at pin. So you're going to see here on this camera angle, I'm able to just use backspin only and then aim at the pin. So here I have my graphic, 25% at mid or if you're somebody playing with a slider, uh, with the Thorn 9, it's going to be 68% slider, and the Thorn 8s and stuff like that are still pretty close. There's a little bit of tweaks, uh, which is why I don't I don't really ever post slider numbers. I work them out in my head. But so, for example, here, let's take a look at it so I can just kind of show you for a second. 25% elevation, 5.6 wind uh, at mid. So 25% at mid is going to be three rings with the thorn, all right? If I were to change this to 10% elevation, but I were to bump this up to 68% slider here, ooh, too far. Close enough, 69%, three rings. So notice that 68, 69% of slider is the same thing as 25% elevation at mid. Now, if you have to keep in mind, this is how the slider works. The slider is based off your drive yards. We hit this one 349 yards. So if we were to drive 350 yards, we would use 
like a percent or two less slider because, um, you know, we're using less of our club. We're closer to the hole. If I was wanting to drive like 340 yards, then, you know, we might be, you know, more like 80% of our club because we're, it's a longer thorn shot. I'm not going to go through the whole thing. Uh, when I start doing expert tournaments, I, make my, I might make a slider video to really teach people how to use it. But regardless, you're going to see here, this is the same thing. We're going to go three rings with two backspin. And for me, I'm pulling over the bullseye. So there's two, three rings. Perfect shot. He's going to drop us into the hole for the eagle on hole number five. Hole number six, getting tailwind. So we might as well just go ahead and do the same thing that I did in the qualifying round, which is go from fairway to fairway down here. Full top, a little bit of right. Kind of notice here I'm playing with my yellow ring very close to the rough line, just a little bit of separation. There's my overpower, just a little bit, maybe a fourth of a ball in the bottom zone for the OP. One bounce, two bounce, roll through the rough, that's what we want, and stop onto the fairway. Okay? If you go with too much OP, you're not going to clip the rough. You're going to go fairway bounce, fairway bounce, fairway bounce, and you're going to roll into the rough way up here. Uh, if that happens, you're still okay. You know, you should easily be on the green in two. Um, and I was because I did that on my other account. But for here, it sets us up for an albatross opportunity. The shot you're seeing played is being played 25% at mid. And you'll kind of notice the spin adjustments here is three back spin, no side spin. Three back, ball guideline offset to the right of the hole, ball guideline past the hole. Do so you see right there? Almost touching the right edge of the cup. Perfect ball. Not even close, unless you're, you know, counting on the rollback to go in the cup. So that would be nice. Uh, but regardless, you know, there's going to be um, shot number two on hole number six for everybody. Takes into hole number seven. Hole number seven, I've got nothing for you. I'll just be completely honest. Uh, I crapped the bed on this one. I put one ball in the sand and one ball in the rough. And I guess we all have days like that. Um, but regardless, here's the thing. I went with six top, three three bars of size spin to the left. Um, what happens here is I just, I just encounter that glitch roll right there. So you see that right there? Um, if you hit that part of the fairway, your ball is going to take off. But you'll notice here I move my target to not have that, that, that ball guideline. So you see my ball guideline is nice and tight here. Well, I pull my rings. Hit a great ball to the left, which I guess put me in that little zone over here. And, you know, we're just going to roll and roll and roll. Now, at the end of the day, this is a tough eagle anyways. But, you know, you're still picking up the birdie from here. So it's not like this was a par or anything like that. You know, I just don't have a shot number two to get you dialed in. I think you just need to go with four bars of top spin, a couple bars of side spin to the left on that drive. And you'll be ready for your sniper shot. Okay. Uh, this one, a couple hole-in-ones to show you. This is in practice. We're going to go with as much back as possible combined with one bar of right side spin. So you're going to notice here, this is not full back spin, um, but it's very close. You can't go full back and full left, but we do want to favor the back spin as hard as we can. You need to get it like this. Sometimes it's tough to get it right. Here's the landing spot. So notice here we're playing a little bit differently in this wind. We're going to be using the light green square bottom right hand corner pocket. So notice that the orange ring down here is almost at the fringe line, but this is exactly where you need to aim. So if you want to take a screenshot of that and put that on a different device while you're playing, um, that second bounce, I don't care what your guardian is, that second bounce right there is what you need to duplicate. All right. I've sent this to some people that I know play pro. Um, you know, they've practiced it on their tokens after I had this set up. You know, one guy's got a Guardian 7, another one's got a Guardian 8, and they were both able to execute the drop. So the shot should be pretty consistent. We do need to pull this at an 11.59 pull angle, okay? That means that arrow up there at the top 
is going to be going north to north left. We do want to completely em uh, eliminate any north to north right flicker. You'll get a better shot at the pull angle here. I was touching my finger on the screen, um, which kind of threw off the way it looked, but I'll show you here. And this was with seven, or this was with five and a half mile per hour wind. Notice here when I went to take my real shot, I got much more wind. And notice here how I struggled getting the back spin and side spin together. Took me a minute here to get the back spin and side spin correct. I don't know what was going on, but there it is, okay? The exact same landing position. Second bounce, corner pocket of that light green square, bottom right-hand corner. Again, with the pull angle here. So you see how it's going north to north left, north to north left? That's what we want to do. Perfect ball. And this one goes right into the cup as well. So even in the higher wind, the shot was very nice. The shot was center of cup, and we pick up the hole in one. Takes on the hole number nine. Like I said, everybody, hole number nine, you saw on the account that I could have competed in. Um, I just messed up this drive. That's it. Great left into the sand. Not the sand. Great left into the rough. Couldn't save it. <sighs> it was very frustrating. But regardless, you know, this is what the drive should look like. Here, um, I used too much curl. We need to reduce this curl by a little bit because you're going to see here, perfect ball. And I clip the rough and then I roll out, you know, but that's okay. I can still reach the green in two, but I'm not really able to set up, you know, a good albatross shot. I'm at max distance on my club here. I have very little fairway to work with when it comes to bouncing. And then my second bounce has very little of fairway to work with without touching that rough. So you see my ball guideline is significantly through the pin. That's just because I had to set it up that way and hope that I don't clip the rough. But, you know, as long as you execute your drive better than I do, remember this shot is minus 10%. Hey, everybody, I wish I had a better walkthrough for you. Um, I do think, though, that, you know, outside the, of me driving hole number seven and picking up a normal birdie, hole number nine is what really did me in. So I hope you do better than me. You know, I do hope you appreciate the video. Um, you know, give it a like. I hate asking for a like whenever I play bad, but the likes do help us out. And please become a subscriber if you're not one already. I will touch base with everybody on Monday for the next tournament.